Oh, good afternoon. I want to talk a bit about the uh, how and why of UHPC for overlays on suspension bridges. And uh, I want to start by, okay, so uh, I'm a civil engineer. And of course, the business of civil engineers is planning, designing, building, uh, maintaining and operating infrastructure. And when you talk about infrastructure, you know, concrete is one of the best materials, and I'm totally unbiased on this, one of the best materials to build infrastructure. And when you want to talk about concrete materials, why not UHPC, which is uh, probably the most durable of the concretes available. You know, obviously concrete doesn't burn, it doesn't rust. So uh, for infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure, it's a, it's a logical material. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning is building sustainable, resilient infrastructure. And uh, that's really my purpose in life and what keeps me going and getting up every morning and building a more resilient and better infrastructure with ultra high performance concrete. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, suspension bridges and sort of the problems or challenges in rehabilitating them. You know, obviously they're very long structures uh, supported on cables. So they have uh, dead load becomes very important. So there's a number of challenges I wanna talk about. And then just a little bit on the key properties of UHPC that are important uh, for solving these challenges. And uh, then talk specifically about the challenges of, of actually doing a rehabilitation with UHPC and then give an example project. <clears throat> so this is a video. And I think, you know, this kind of highlights the challenges uh, uh, that are faced with suspension bridges. Now, this is an exaggerated condition where you know, obviously the, the, the uh, natural frequency of the wind is matching the frequency of the bridge and, it, and it's not stiff enough to resist it. So you're getting excessive movement. But even in, in regular suspension bridges that don't perform like this, which is not the way it's supposed to, you still have a lot of movement going on in the bridge. The bridges are always moving because there's always wind, there's always truck traffic, construction equipment. So while you're working on the bridge, it's constantly moving. And that's one of the challenges we face when working on a suspension bridge. In addition to that, because a suspension bridge <clears throat> is a long span carried on cables, dead load of the deck becomes very important because it has a big impact on the overall design, a significant impact. So there's a lot of effort made to end up with the lightest possible deck which means in a lot of cases, composite deck, thin deck, metal deck with very thin concrete. But when you go with a very thin light deck, then obviously that situation I showed previously becomes a big issue. You get more tendency for wind movement. And so you end up with very stiff superstructure. So they basically use a steep, a deep, stiff truss section to dampen the vibration and the movement from the wind. So, but as a result of that, you end up with, in a lot of cases, a very thin deck and so if you want to do a rehab on the deck, uh, you have to, there's a, there's a lot of uh, issues to consider. So if you remove too much of the concrete to rehabilitate, so if a lot of the concrete is deteriorated and you remove too much, you could punch to the deck. So in most cases, what you want to do is only remove a small amount of the concrete, the minimum amount, and put back a very thin, durable overlay on top, which is why UHPC looks like sort of an obvious solution in that situation. The other issue we face on suspension bridges is that you're typically a couple hundred feet in the air. And in most cases, you're over a very large body of water uh, with a lot of wind. So you're working in an environment that's uh, moving. It's high in the air with a lot of wind going across it, uh, which also has an impact on, on the curing environment. Uh, it's constantly moving. The bridge is on a slope. So you have, you know, you have a, an ideal working condition for uh, doing a rehabilitation. Okay, so I just want to touch quickly on the properties, and I think most of the people in this room know the properties of UHPC. But I want to touch quickly on a few of them that are important for this type of an application. You know, obviously compressive strength is important, but the tensile strength is one of the more important properties here. Because the concrete deck is gonna be continuously moving, you can imagine that it's always twisting and bending and moving. And so consequently, it's putting that deck in tension. So you wanna have good tensile properties to, to resist all that movement and fatigue, potential fatigue in the deck so that it will perform long-term. If you put an overlay down, you want it to stand up uh, long-term. 
Uh, you also need to have good bond strength because you want it to bond well to the substrate after you prepare it. And the elastic modulus also helps in terms of stiffness to the deck uh, for uh, reducing and damping the movement. So on bond, uh, UHPC bonds extremely well to concrete. As a matter of fact, it, it bonds extremely well to most things. And uh, I always get a question, well, UHPC bond to UHPC. Yes, it will. Uh, it'll bond to steel very well. And I always take people over and show them the inside of our concrete mixers. And I say, hey, take and try and remove some of that UHPC off the steel liner and see how well it sticks. Uh, it sticks very well to steel. And one of the tests we do are a rebar, bond a rebar bond development. So we'll embed the bar four, four diameters into the UHPC and then pull on the bar. And if the bar breaks, you pass the test. That's a typical test that several of the DOTs uh, requires to do when we're doing projects in the field on, on connections. So it bonds well to concrete, it bonds well to itself, and it bonds well to steel. Um, durability, obviously you want a, an overlay that is a high durability in terms of abrasion resistance, um, free saw resistance, uh, also permeability, a low permeability, because when you put the overlay down, you don't want to be putting a membrane or an asphalt wearing surface on top. You want to put down the overlay and leave it exposed and have it provide the wearing surface as well as the protection uh, to the substrate or whatever's below it. Shrinkage, this is very important when you're putting an overlay onto an existing concrete. Uh, shrinkage, is, it can take the form of cracking, tension cracks as the overlay shrinks. So you wanna have a material that is low in shrinkage and you also wanna have a material that can resist the shrinkage. And so the tensile properties of UHPC help it to resist shrinkage. So as the shrinkage occurs, you put the concrete in tension uh, and some of your tensile capacity is consumed due to the shrinkage of the overlay. So the lower the shrinkage, the less consumption of the tensile capacity, the higher residual tensile strength you have uh, to use in the design of the overlay. So shrinkage is another important property. As a matter of fact, if you run the test, the standard ASTM test for shrinkage, uh, for non-shrink growths, you'll find that the majority of UHPCs will be, could be classified as a non-shrink growth. So the shrinkage in UHPC is typically quite low. Uh, and of course, you know, different UHPCs have different, different shrinkage properties. Uh, Thixotropic, now Zach talked about this earlier. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues when you're casting on a slope or on a bridge, all bridges have cross slope blades and particularly a suspension bridge. So you're casting on a slope and you want the material to stay in place. It cannot be self-consolidating. So we use Thixotropic, meaning that when you place the material, it's like a dry slump or a low slump concrete. It doesn't flow very much. When you add vibration energy to the material, it starts to flow. So that vibration energy liquefies it, allows you to spread it, screed it, and allows it to consolidate and bond at the interface. So you have a, a method of vibrating that material uh, that consolidates and liquefies it. When the vibration stops, the material reverts back to its jelly-like consistency and it holds its position. So we need to make a mix that is fluid enough that you can get a spread in front of the, of the screed or the paving machine, because somebody has to do that. And in the slide that Zach showed with all those guys with the rakes in front of the screed, you can see them all pushing the material around. So you need to make it easy enough that can move it and place it in front of the screed, but not so fluid that it's gonna run away when the screed passes by. So it takes a tropic mix. Okay, so I want to I want to show an example of this material on an overlay bridge. Uh, this is a, a project in uh, Rhode Island, Newport Pell Suspension Bridge, uh, and it's uh, I think it's the 85th longest suspension bridge in the world, maybe the 86th. I know there's another big one that just opened up recently in Turkey. Um, it's a fairly fairly large bridge. Um, the bridge looks like a quilt when you drive across it on the suspension span. They actually uh, rehabilitated the approach over the trusses and, and girders uh, with a high performance concrete. And so they did a test section in the middle of the bridge to try some UHPC overlay on the suspension span, which, uh, which they did uh, last year, year before last now, I guess in 2020. Um, 
but the rest of the approaches are being done in a, in a more conventional concrete overlay. And so the, uh, the owner wanted to investigate using the UHPC overlay on this bridge. So the actual overlay was done right where the arrow is from there towards the uh, pier, uh, the, the section in the center, center lane. Um, and uh, they milled out hydro, hydro demoed off the uh, existing concrete and put back a, a one lane test section through the middle. So the mixers were actually placed pretty much top dead center of the bridge. Uh, and then the overlay was going down the slope towards the pier. So you can see the hydro demo. Uh, they were removing the, the uh, deteriorated concrete and uh, using a, a hydro demo machine, which uses a high pressure water that removes the deteriorated concrete. And nice thing about a hydro demo is that it removes the bad concrete and so you end up with different, different depths of removal depending on the condition of the concrete. So wherever you have good concrete, it doesn't remove it. Wherever you have poor concrete, it removes it. So you end up with a very uh, moon crater-like surface and you'll see on the right, you'll see some places the rebar is exposed. Sometimes you'll see uh, concrete exposed. Uh, and, and because this bridge had had numerous repairs over the years, you had different quality of concrete, all patchwork. And so when the hydro demo goes in, it will remove any of the deteriorated or bad patch repair and only leave the good concrete. So this video shows uh, placing the material uh, onto, the, uh, onto the deck. Um, and the, the, the only preparation we do prior to placing it after the hydro demo is wet. You want to have it saturated surface dry to enhance the bond of the surface. So the material is placed in front of the screed. Now you can use vibrating deck, bridge deck screed, or you can use a, a slip form paving machine that's been designed specifically for UHPC. So on the left is a vibrating screed, runs down, uh, the lane and, and screeds off the material. So as it vibrates, it consolidates the material, levels it out. And then as the screed moves away, the material goes back to its or original consistency and holds a shape. And then the one on the right is an actual slip form paving machine, uh, also placing it uh, on a deck. So once the material is screeded off, uh, put on a white pigmented sp uh, spray curing compound, wait for the material to take its initial set and then cover it with a burlap uh, and, and a, a polyethylene to protect it and uh, provide enhanced curing. Once the material reaches 14,000 PSI, uh, I can uh, grind and groove it to give it a, a nice texture and a nice ride. Uh, so you see on the right, the finished surface after the grinding and grooving. So this is my last slide, highlight it in yellow. There's over 75 long suspension bridges in the US that are more than 50 years of age, and they're all just waiting their turn to get a UHPC overlay. Thank you for your attention. Thanks uh, to Mr. Vic Perry. There is a question. Do we have questions from the audience? Oh, yeah. Uh, did you mean to say that can cast a fresh UHPC Yes, the UHPC that is already hardened. So you have a UHPC, you made a statement that UHPC can bond to UHPC. Okay, let's say I have a hardened UHPC. Did you mean to say that fresh UHPC can be cast against it and you get a good bonding? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Unless you have a mechanical action. No, no, no. We, we've done it lots of times in the field where we'll actually cast Fresh UHPC against previously hardened UHPC. Okay, well, we don't have all to agree. I think Professor has is in a meaning, as is an opinion. Perfect. Are we ready for a question from the audience? Sure. The, the question online is um, you didn't seem to clean the bar or create a space under it for the new material to bond around the existing reinforcing, I guess. Um, is this not required for UHPC? So I guess they're mentioning that they looked like there was uh, corrosion products on the surface of, of the existing rebar. And then I guess some of the bars were only partially exposed. 
Yeah, well, with, with the hydro demo, in some cases, you will expose the rebar. And so the UHPC will go down and flow under the rebar. In some cases, uh, it doesn't remove. If the concrete is good quality, it won't remove it. So you'll have concrete on top of the rebar. So that you're going to have a series of different surfaces when you're going to place the UHPC. It'll flow under the rebar. And, and I guess the second part of the question is um, corrosion on the rebar. Yes. And a little bit of corrosion on, enhances the bond, but you don't want it to lose scale. I mean, that, if, you, if you do a hydro demo, you're putting a lot of water and you're blasting concrete off the rebar. So you're going you're gonna to clean that rebar. And by the next day, you're going to have corrosion on it. That little bit of corrosion will just enhance the bond. It doesn't, it's, not a, it's not a negative. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Mr. Perry.